Okay, good. We're here. Good morning, beautiful family. Morning, sis. Morning, family. Good morning, sis. Good morning. Uh, today's lesson is 304. Let not my world obscure the sight of Christ. That's a big one. Let not my world obscure the sight of Christ. Which world is he talking about? This false world, the unforgiven, sinful world full of fear and dark images. The world we believe to be true. The one we made to replace the kingdom of heaven. Bad wow. trade. Bad trade. <laughs> Is that the title of the next book? It is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, yes, it is. Okay. I can obscure my holy sight if I intrude my world upon it. Nor can nor can I behold the highly oh, no, the highly <laughs> Do the backup for highly whatever it is. Holy. Anyway, holy, holy. Uh, so let's just back up to that sentence again. Yes. Beginning it. <laughs> Sorry. Nor can I behold the whole the the holy sights Christ looks upon <laughs> unless it is his vision that I use. Boy, that's key. Can I just Isn't stop it? there for a second? Yeah, I just was like, okay. Yes. <laughs> Let's do well, that. Because while the ego's doing these lessons, you know, the ego is always people are like, how do you see the light? And I giggle because, you know, I had that question myself. How am I supposed to see beyond bodies to the face of Christ? <laughs> they actually start to squint at you when they ask the question. <laughs> and it's like, that's the ego asking the question. It's the ego doing the doing. Yeah. And yet it is completely getting the self, you know, mythical me out of the way. And it's in the admission that I don't, I can't do anything of myself. I don't have Christ vision. I don't know how to go, but there it's, and it's the affirmation that there is one in my mind that does. So it's hands off the wheel, completely letting go of the, I know mind, turning the reins over and saying, Holy Spirit, show me right it's like yes so i cannot behold any of the holy sights that christ's vision would give to me i cannot see or experience the real world and i cannot behold my brother's face as christ while there's any ego slash fear going on in the mind right right so it goes back to the origin right yes um which self are we seeing through? Are That's we right. seeing through the ego's dark filter? Or yes. are we seeing from the light of Christ in our mind, which is the vision, Christ vision? Yes. And, and the radical honesty that says what I am beholding is indicative of the desire that I had because I'm always making a choice. In every now moment, I'm making that choice. Am I mythical me or am I is Holy Spirit leading? and governing or guiding right, so what right? you're saying is we can see the origin which self it comes from yes by our reaction to what we're perceiving and it also indicates what our desire is yes so let's turn the desire over to holy spirit if we're not seeing the holy sights that christ's vision would give us yes yes okay there, right. yes very good mm -hmm. um <clears throat> Okay, I'll go back on that second um, sentence again. Nor can I behold the holy sights Christ looks upon unless it is his vision, Christ vision, that I use. Perception is a mirror, not a fact. And what I look on is my state of mind reflected outward. Can you just say that 10 times? <laughs> yeah, I know. So what I look on is my state of mind reflected outward. In other words, what I look on 
no matter what it is, no matter how horrific it is, Mm -hmm. what I look on um, is what I want. Yes. Well, it's a mirror of your mind. Like two months ago, that's what he gave us. It was like, it is the exact mirror. You're seeing the mirror image of the inner state of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Now that no judgment, because all we did was mistakenly identify ourselves with the dream, the, the figure in the dream, who's using the ego thought system as its mind. And this is the way that it works. The ego thought is filled with the fear and the guilt around the belief that it is separate. And, and so, of course, those thoughts are mirrored out onto that figure's experience, right? So we're looking at all of this and going, I need to heal my mind. Yep. That's all that needs to be healed so that the mirrored reflection is good. So where am I going to start locating myself? Back as the Christ. And then do we throw the body, the figure, dream figure out? No, 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 no. But we do locate ourselves as the Christ. And then we give the body in our mind, in a healed mind, to the Christ for the use of the will of God to awaken the sleeping sonship for a little while. Mm-hmm. So it's just the awakening. It's like, I'm not Corrine. I'm the Christ who's willing to use the idea of Corrine temporarily in this dream to be a speaker box, right? Mm -hmm. To the awakening sonship to say, hey, that's not you. And you don't have to suffer the world, right? It's healing of the mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that that mirror, that sentence there is just phenomenal. Well, yeah. Perception is a mirror, not a fact. And what I look on is my state of mind. In other words, what I want reflected outward. Yep. The other thing that I just got then mm. uh, is there are many, many things that that I still see where I'm at, the phase that I'm in of the of the undoing. Mm-hmm. That, that I see now that used to trigger me greatly, right? And cause some of those things cause great fear. Yeah. And now I can still see some of them, but it's entirely neutral, the mm-hmm. feeling. There's no concern at all. There's no spike of fear. There's no need to defend. Um, it's entirely neutral. That's the right. word that comes to me. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just neutral. And, and so therefore, I, I, the point that I'm trying to make is that as we awaken, we can still see, um, what would you say? We could st- still see what the ego would term as adversity in some places. Mm-hmm but we're no longer affected by it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That would also be deemed, you know, healing, right? Cause I don't have any trigger from it. So it'll either be removed from your situation, um, mm-hmm. harmonized, healed, whatever, or the need will be met or you will be a passerby and it'll have absolutely no pull, right? Because there's nothing in your mind that identifies with it or wants to fuel it. It's, there's no, no attraction in your mind to it. That's what Jesus was doing. Just walking the earth with a complete state of peace and certainty in the, his, uh, father. <laughs> right. And so there's nothing that says, well, maybe that's true too. You know, maybe something's gone wrong. No. Yeah. Okay. So but that's part of Christ's vision mm-hmm. returning to our mind. And what I'm receiving now is more of that Christ vision or that neutral state, detached state, where there's no trigger, no fear, that's where the light penetrates that or fills that space. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where we become miracle minded mm-hmm. because our mind is filled with light. Yes. And because our brothers and sisters, uh, of course, share the same identity mm-hmm. as the Christ. That light's got to be shared with them to yes. help to eradicate their their darkness as well. Yeah, and that's so good. And that explains, you know, why Jesus would pass by certain people and he could recognize 
the thought of whoever he was um, with as are they open to the light? Do they want the light, right? Mm -hmm. So he's filled with that light and he's looking at the thought of those around him in the dream. And some of them really want that to the point that they know it's going to change their nature and who they are, their whole way of being and seeing. So he's saying, do you want to be whole or do you just want to be better, a better person? And those who just wanted a healed body or a quick fix, you know, he didn't call to those. He saw the one who was open and wanted the light mm. and extended the light. And that's when they were healed. Right. Mm. So we, the things that seem to stay in the world is because the, the sleeping sonship, you know, the majority is still sleeping, but while we accept the light, it has no power over us right? We're not, our mind isn't darkened there. We're not buying that illusion. We have the, the light has come. And so from there, now we have it to extend to somebody else that really wants it. Mm. That's the miracle working, right? Cause you can't do the miracle working unless you first receive, <clears throat> receive the correction. Well, we can't give what we haven't received. That's the, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. 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 The soul. The sole responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept, guess what? Atonement for himself. That's it. Yeah. That's the correction of fear in right. our mind that brings the light in or removes the darkness by bringing the light in. Yeah, Christ vision. And that's what I these... better finish the lesson, right? I was going to say, that's what these lessons are about, though. It's like, let that darkness be replaced by the light. That's our prayer. That's the only way we can be of any value in the dream at all. It's the only way that reality can dawn and we can find a real world, right? So he's saying this is how to surrender and let. Remember, it's a letting. It's right now we're defending against that from happening by thinking that we're a body and our stories. Okay, I'll shut up. Go ahead. No, it's very helpful, sis. Well, it's, it's exciting. I hear this a thousand times, you know. Yeah. <laughs> really can. Um, second paragraph of this lesson, let my let not my world obscure the sight of Christ. You lead me from the darkness to the light, from sin to holiness. Let me forgive and thus receive salvation for the world. There it is again. It's there not it personal. Right. It's for the world, right? It's for yes. every sleeping son. Okay. It is your gift, my father, given me to offer to your holy son that he may find again the memory of you and of your son as you created him, the Christ. Beautiful. Yeah. And again, the... the uh... The order of that is so beautiful, like a heart opens and desires the truth. The defense drops. Mm. The light comes. It is extended to another brother. And in the experience of seeing a brother transformed or healed or receiving the light, we know it for ourselves. Isn't that gorgeous? We get to keep what we first received only after we've extended it to our brother. And in our brother's healing, we are healed because we know it. Right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm hmm There you go. Anything else on that one, sis? <laughs> hmm. I think so. So can we ju judge our brothers? Should we blame the world? Are there oh. real problems out there? Right. We don't judge ourselves, but it's definitely a call to say, I could see another world in this if I were to take full accountability and say, this is just a mirror of a fearful mind that I seem to be entertaining. And it is not this that I want anymore. And through forgiveness, and accepting the atonement for myself, I could have my mind returned to wholeness, right? Yeah. That's a good point, sis. Just was, I was reading this morning with Daniel mm. about the fact that we can't judge at all, right? And, mm. um, and
and that, uh, of course, the last what what is involved in in our last step mm -hmm. uh, is a relinquishment of judgment. We can't judge. <laughs> you know, I had a giggle really because we can't judge because anything we feel compelled to judge, anybody we feel compelled to judge, is our own unconscious self-judgment that's it it's, it's self-judgment that yes of course projected onto somebody else that's right we're, we're, yeah we're projecting the problem over the person that's it and that's how it safeguards it it's like the the mythical me's own unworthiness fear guilt um, and when we really get down in the bunker, the hatred, the animosity, the fury, the vengeance that we want to take out on the past, we, we tuck it out there in the world and that's how we, it's safeguarded. And then we judge it. And that's the glue. I'm really, I know that judgment is the glue and judgment prevents Holy Spirit from taking it from us. We have to withdraw our judgments before any healing can occur in our mind. So before we can let not my world obscure the sight of Christ, I need to remove by forgiveness any judgment. And it's a beautiful thing, very freeing to come back to the I don't know place. Mm -hmm. I never thought I'd hear myself say those words. <laughs> so gorgeous to go, I don't know. So then it's not like an insult to mm -hmm. say, I can't judge anything because you recognize that the one that's judging, it's, it's, it's an insane mind looking on a world that doesn't exist, looking at chaos and trying to make sense of it, looking into the dark and trying to see light where there isn't any. Jesus says, you see your brother as he's never been. You're hearing sounds that have never been made. You know, it's like, wow, it's just forsaking everything and coming back and asking our right mind to actually inform us and being confident in what we're informed of because it's coming from source. It's coming from the mind of God, the creator of the universe who knows his creation and you can trust and that's why you can rest. You don't have to know what anything is for. You, don't, you just have to be listening and doing, right? So off with judgment. It's that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. Uh, the mind peace. thanks us for not judging. <laughs> yeah, of course we can't judge. No. I mean, there's so much freedom yes. in relinquish relinquishing judgment and the need to control. Yeah. Right. Yes, and another beautiful thing that just popped up was that my favorite part of really about all of this is when hands are off the wheel and control has been surrendered to watch God move, mm. Mm. to watch wisdom take care of things that we judged as difficult or impossible uh, to do, you know, or that I know mine was grinding and it's in despair. You know, when you back off of all of that and you let the truth be true, how things are arranged, the people show up, the door opens, the answer comes, the aha revelation, the download comes. It's just so gorgeous. Um, and, and gratitude arises and then a greater certainty in God's grace and his love for us and how effortless the flow is, how how beautifully carried we are. I mean, the, you, the felt state of the relationship of his love for us, that's the reward of letting go. <laughs> yeah. oh. Oh, how could we want anything else but that? Let's all go listen to Frozen, let it go and turn up the volume. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> song. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sis. Thanks for extending the light of gratitude outward for all our family. Thank uh, you. Yeah.
Okay, we will see you tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Okay. Bye, everybody. We love you. Love you, sis. You can bank on that.